Greetings and welcome to worship today. A couple of announcements as we begin. The first is that today we will be completing our five-week series on the book of Job. Next week when we gather together again, we will begin looking at Paul's second letter to the Corinthians. Our next announcement pertains to worship. This week on July 8th, Wednesday, and Sunday, July 12th, we will be beginning in-person worship. And so please keep an eye out in your email for reminders of what this will look like. Some informational videos about how we will be entering the building and practicing safe social distancing and just healthy practices all around. A reminder that we will be doing the best that we can to manage risk. But if you are not comfortable joining us for worship in person yet, we wholeheartedly welcome you to continue worshiping online. God is present on your couch, in our pews, and wherever we gather together. If you have any questions, please reach out to either Pastor Tim or I at the Bethlehem office, and we will gladly talk through it with you. So now we begin worship together. Please take a moment of silence for reflection as we focus and gather our hearts and our minds together for worship to our loving God. Please join me in a moment of silence and reflection. We gather together as a dispersed yet still connected community of faith, the church living in the world, in the name of God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. We confess our sins before God and one another. Please take a moment of silence for reflection. Gracious God, we are tempted to be thankful only when things go well for us. We are tempted to take credit for all that is good in our lives. We are tempted to think that we alone can fix the suffering of the world. We conveniently forget that all good things come from you and your work through us. Forgive us for being short-sighted, arrogant, and thoughtless. Cleanse our hearts and bring us back to your side, for you are all that we truly need. God hears our repentance and answers our request for forgiveness. Receive the assurance of your Creator's mercy and return to the loving embrace of the one who made, loved, and redeemed you. In Jesus' name, amen. Please join with me in the prayer of the day on your screen. God of wisdom, you have the power to reorder and restore our lives, just as you did for Job. Accept our remorse for where we have walked astray and bring us back into relationship with you. For the sake of Jesus Christ, amen. So this week, we complete this five-week series on the book of Job. And Job ends, like last week, with God finally answering Job's question, but not really in the way that Job expected. And so in this week, Job responds to the Lord and then is restored into life again. So hear these words from Job chapter 42, and I'll be doing a little bit of jumping around because it gets kind of long. So we will be listening to verses 1 through 6, 10 through 3, and 16 through 17. Then Job answered the Lord, I know that you can do all things, and that no purpose of yours can be thwarted. Who is this that hides counsel without knowledge? Therefore I have uttered what I did not understand, things too wonderful for me which I did not know. Hear, and I will speak. I will question you, and you declare to me. I have heard of you by the hearing of the ear, but now my eye sees you. Therefore I despise myself, and repent in dust and ashes. And the Lord restored the fortunes of Job when he had prayed for his friends, 
and the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. Then there came to him all of his brothers and sisters and all who had known him before, and they ate bread with him in his house. They showed him sympathy and comforted him for all the evil that the Lord had brought upon him. And each of them gave him a piece of money and a gold ring. The Lord blessed the later days of Job more than his beginning. And he had 14,000 sheep, 6,000 camels, 1,000 yoke of oxen, and 1,000 donkeys. He also had seven sons and three daughters. After this, Job lived 140 years and saw his children and his children's children, four generations. And Job died old and full of days. The word of our Lord. Amen. As we see in the story of Job, there is a pattern to grief and suffering. Order, disorder, and reorder. This past Lent, we did a series on grief, and the stages of grief also follow this same pattern. Order. Life is great. We are happy where we are, Things, for the most part, are going well. There is a cadence to our lives that we are comfortable in. Disorder. We are struck with tragedy. Loss of a loved one. Loss of our livelihood. Loss of our health. Loss of the way that life should be. We find ourselves in stages of denial, anger, bargaining, and depression that become never-ending cycles, leaving us feeling like we are in a whirlwind of emotions or completely void of them entirely. Reorder. Acceptance. Faith that while things will never return to where they were and we will never get to move on, life still continues forward. Living and loving are still worth it. And we grow into deeper relationships with God and with those that we love. Order, disorder, and then reorder. The story of Job experiences this same pattern. We heard in our first week, Job was in order. Job was an upstanding man in right relationship with God and with his family and his friends. Based on our own human understanding, good things should be coming Job's way because Job is a good person. Disorder. Job's life is turned upside down. Job loses his children, his livelihood, and his health. His friends and his wife turn against him, convinced that either he or his children has done something wrong to deserve these bad things that have come into his life and sent him into this whirlwind. He demands answers from God, and God is silent. Reorder. In chapter 38, God answers Job. Not with an answer that would return Job to his original order, but one that opens Job up into a world of reorder, placing Job's suffering in the wider dialogue of suffering and joy and creation in God's world. Job's life is then restored, but not replicated. He has more children. He grows in riches more than he had before, and he is cared for and loved the rest of the days of his life. But Job does not return to the person that he was. Job is shaped into new understanding of his place in creation and is renewed and deepened in his faith in a God that he can trust. You see, God does not leave us where we are. The story of God's creation is a long arc, and that arc moves to a place of deeper relationship and goodness with our God. 
order in life is good. If we, but if we never suffer or have grief or strain, we will stagnate. Success really teaches us nothing. It just feels good. Order is not a bad place to be in, but there is no growth. Disorder forces us to look at the places where change needs to occur. Disorder cries for wrongs to be righted. Disorder places a spotlight on the places where our order may not have been order for our neighbor. It is not our suffering that shapes us. It is our response in the midst of it. We quickly discover where our strong handholds are, where those things that we can put our trust in lie, and the places where we cannot. And reorder moves us forward. We cannot go back to where we were before, because we are not the same people that we were before, and we are better for it. Just like Job, we more deeply understand the suffering of the world and where we fit into this story of death and resurrection that has been told and lived over and over again in God's love story to us. Think of your own baptism. Order, disorder, and reorder. In baptism, we confess that we wish to move from our old sinful lives the order that we are living in, into new life in Christ. This new life does not just happen. We are first confronted with the death of this old life in the waters of baptism. For those who celebrate full submersion baptism, this is the moment under the water, that moment of death. If the baptized stay under the water, there is no new life. That first Breath is reorder, and they are not the same person that they were before, and life does not return to how it was after we are baptized. And each time that we remember our baptism, we remember this disorder that ushers us into reorder, into new life in Christ. Job shares a story with Jesus. Job is the epitome of a moral and righteous man, having done no wrong, and yet the disorder of evil and suffering still shape his life. Jesus, a righteous man, fully God and fully human, shares in this blameless relationship with God, and yet is confronted again and again and again with the suffering of his beloved people and creation, and also his own suffering on the cross. Job begs for an answer from God. And in God's response, Job knows that God is taking him seriously and that his suffering is simply a piece of a larger conversation that has been happening forever. Jesus becomes the answer in his passion, death, and resurrection. But the answer that Jesus gives to us is still the same. God can be trusted. Your world, my world, our world will reorder. Our suffering or grief, like Job's, is addressed and included in a much larger conversation than just us. In our grief, we don't really need answers. We need our grief to be taken seriously as a part of this cosmic dialogue. But this is clarity that only comes when we look back from a place of reorder. We see this pattern in the pandemic we are currently in. We are in a place of disorder. This is not a place of order and we are not yet to reorder. We cannot stay in this place that we are in right now but we also can't go back to how things were. In what ways is God accompanying us forward into reorder? We also see this in the civic unrest that is taking place in our country. We cannot go back to the way that things were. We are in a state of 
disorder? What reorder is God calling us forward to? Just like Job, we are in the midst of disorder, and we must cling to our faith in a God who is trustworthy. The God who has shown us innumerable times throughout history that God will not leave us in disorder. But we also cannot return to the order that we came from. God is a God of new creation and growth. And in reorder, will walk alongside us into a place of deeper faith, of deeper love, and of deeper engagement with God and God's beloved creation. Amen. I invite you to join me in singing the hymn, Day by Day. We pray now together for the church, the world, and all of those in need. Please join me in prayer. Good and gracious God, you love a humble heart, and you hear us when we sincerely repent. Make us thankful for your patience and grace when we are far from deserving it. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, as we celebrate our nation's independence and the blessings that we have been given, may we prize our citizenship in your kingdom above all other identities and work to ensure liberties for all of your people in our country and in our world. 
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we have been entrusted with the care of all of your creatures, both great and small. Forgive us our failure to protect and cherish them, and teach us a better way of coexisting with our animal sisters and brothers. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, show us where we are needed to comfort those who are suffering, trusting that your spirit will be present with us. Heal those in need, especially Jacob and Joshua Ackerman, Ruth Asmus, Lori Asmus, Darren Baumgartner, Bob Beach, Bob Dregseth, Carol Jevney, Carrie Leach, Marlis Keene, Alan Oak, Betty Opine, Betty Raftevold, Jean Shasso, Maxine Sherritt, Peggy Wolvatny, Maria Winters, Travis Anderson, Ryan Carlsrud, Michelle Earthly Johnson, Paul Fisher, Shelby Fullman, Vince Goodnow, Trish McLairglin, Donna Michelin, Bruce Opime Jr., Rhonda Smith, and those we lift up from the silence of our hearts now. Embrace these, your beloveds, in your loving hands. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Receive our prayers and use us to be the answers to the needs of your people. For the sake of Jesus, who taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Receive this benediction. As you go on your way, may Christ go with you. May he go before you to show you the way. May he go behind you to encourage you, beside you to befriend you, above you to watch over, within you to give you. name of God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace and blessings be with you today. Go forth in the joy and love and renewal that God calls us into. We look forward to seeing some of you in person and continuing to worship with many of you online as well. Jesus loves you and keep washing your hands. <laughs>